Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna talk about the barbell bent over row. Now, we're gonna go from a high position and we're gonna talk about three big reasons why I think it's a great lift and why you should include it into your training program to improve your throwing. Now, first and foremost, it's easy, doesn't require a lot of equipment, and it's a pretty straightforward technical movement, but that leads into the second thing, that it really helps expose technical weaknesses in the back and the scap retractors. So, if you have an athlete and they're having a hard time doing this like the athlete I'm showing here we're going through a lot of instruction to teach a relatively basic position this is going to show you how significant the anterior dominance is meaning how rounded those shoulders are athletes are playing video games on cell phones they're doing so much forward movement maybe they're doing a lot of bench pressing and they're not doing enough back work and this is really going to show you if you have a shoulder imbalance that's going to have a big impact on your throwing so those are three main reasons why I really like it and why it should be something that you should incorporate into your training program. When we look here, we have an advanced athlete. One of the reasons why, again, I like it so much in its application is because it teaches you to keep the shoulder blades back and down and you have to pull the bar into the crease of the hip. So you're going to know the, ro the rowing motion is more this way, which pulls those scaps back and down. Because of that, we tend to use a supine grip to pull the elbows in so that we're going to get that better pulling motion that's pulling that chest open and back. And this is going to be really helpful for when you're trying to improve your bench press to keep you stable on the bench and so this is a really simple way and a good add-on accessory to make sure that you're improving your bench press when we start teaching the movement so when you look here and I got a more advanced athlete what we're trying to do again like I mentioned in the last segment here we're trying to keep the palms in a supine grip we're gonna keep the bar close to the body so if the back is engaged the scaps are pulled back and down which they need to be and then you can pull that bar kind of up the crease of the hip like you're pulling it through your body you're gonna get those scaps constantly working down and when you see athletes that are rounded, or if you're an athlete watching this and you have those rounded shoulders, this is gonna wreak havoc on your ability to create separation in your rotational throws, and it's gonna create a problem with you learning technique, right? Because if you have this body in a less than optimal position, you're gonna start compensating. So you're gonna pick up a lot of weird technical habits. So when we do this, we're pulling the shoulder blades back and down. We wanna keep the shoulders retracted in position so that we're keeping that bar are basically right at that top knee position. If the shoulders are dominant round forward, the bar floats out away from the athlete. So a real simple thing is to make sure that as you are doing this movement, you're pulling that bar and it's kind of sliding up the thighs into the crease of the hip. Again, the supine grip, like I mentioned in the beginning here, keeps the elbows in. So for athletes that are already have that tendency to go out, when you do more of a natural prone grip, meaning overhanded grip, you're going to see your athletes pulling with the shoulders and the biceps and pulling the elbows out. That's going to create an issue. So when we work here we're kind of going to just be keeping the scaps in place not letting them come forward so that we can really feel that chest open up as we complete the pull as we go through and what we want to do, whether we're looking at a beginning athlete or an advanced athlete, you're going to see that the, the more advanced athlete, you're going to get some bicep working. You can do this in a, in a moderate weight, higher rep. You can do this a little heavier, but we don't want to go crazy heavy with this supine grip because you can potentially create unnecessary strain and pressure on the bicep attachment tendon, and we want to avoid that. So this is going to be, we can use some relatively heavier weight, but we're going to see like our athlete here on the left, we're going to use it a moderate weight and we're going to do a lot of high rep movement so we can just really blast that back we're going to get a little assistance work on the biceps and this is going to really be able to see where the athlete starts to fatigue and you can see our athlete here on the right he's starting to use a little bit of a trap but he's learning the movement and this is a really quick big bang for your buck type movement that's going to help you improve quickly remember when your throws training you want to think about what you're doing with your lifting is it aiding in your throws development and can something simple like this make a big difference in your training and the answer is absolutely and this is a big part of what we talk about inside the throwing chain reaction system and our strength training for throwers segment so if you'd like more information be sure to click the link in the description or in the bio hit that thumbs up give us a like subscribe and we will see you on the next video as you can see there's a lot that goes into what we do with the throwing chain reaction system if you would like to learn more about how to structure your practices and find the things that help unlock your potential click the link below and we will see See you on the next video.